and others might accuse us of not being considerate. But every decision that we've taken, we've taken that decision for the sake of our children. You will agree with me that it will be a disaster if we don't have the registration of learners in grade 1 and grade 8. It's a disaster that we can't even think about because the entire education system it's a great feeding another grade. So it was within that context therefore that we felt we need to postpone that online registration last week to the 20th so that we don't have a protracted legal case uh, but we negotiate and persuade each other to reach at an amicable solution. So I'm proud to announce that we have done that. Uh, where we felt we needed to be flexible, we're flexible, and I'll take you through on those areas. Where we felt we needed to defend, uh, we have done that. As I'm speaking to you now, there is no pending legal case against the department. Uh, all parties that have written letters to us, all of them, as we start this briefing, uh, they've indicated that they're satisfied uh, with what we've done. So I'm going to give you three areas. The first one is just to give you background, and the second part will be the legislative argument that the parties used, and the last part is the systematic uh, role that the system will play to go live uh, tomorrow morning. So those three areas will be in a position to outline to you how we want to attend to them and how will we attend to them. But there's one point that all parties are missing and I really feel that I need to emphasize that point. That the admission regulations, especially the feeder zone, it was a judgment of the constitutional court. Uh, it's not a certain Panyaza Lusufit loss. Uh, it was a judgment of the Constitutional Court. And when there is a judgment, you comply with the judgment. Uh, the judgment was very explicit. If you have time, go back to that judgment. It says South Africa had Group Areas Act, and areas were on the basis of race, and there were people that could not access certain schools purely because uh, of where they were born. So that judgment, therefore, requested us to change that thinking so that we have a non-racial feeder zone system. That's, that's, that's the basis of that judgment. Uh, and to effect that, we had to then pass our own legislation. You will see the issue of feeder zone is only in Gaudi. Uh, the issue of the admission regulations is only in Gaudi because... We needed to effect uh, our own legislation so that we comply uh, with the uh, uh, judgment. But let me also emphasize what the judgment said. Because this will give you context of the level of consultation that we've embarked on. Because where I stand now, I really believe that people that are consulted and the people that after being consulted, they want to be consulted alone, outside the group. When the legislation or the judgment was passed, we went to Constitutional Court and say, Constitutional Court, clarify us this part. Do we consult the SGB associations or do we consult each and every school? The Constitutional Court said both. You consult the SGB association, but most importantly, you must consult each and every school. So you can imagine with 2,300 schools, that consultation was extensive and intensive. So that each and every school could be given a map and say, School X 
you were recruiting people in Rodiport alone. Now you must include Dobsonville. Do we agree or disagree? And some of the school actually assisted us. So no, 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 no. We agree with Dobsonville, but there is a new informal settlement here expanded to that area. So we did that, and we did that extensively. As I said, each and every school. The good thing about this process as well is that it also gave the schools the right to appeal if they were not happy. So they will appeal to the MEC and say, MEC, the HOD and your officials are rigid. Uh, and therefore, we really believe we need to appeal. And some of the appeal have up upheld it personally. And some of the appeal have rejected them. So I'm trying to demonstrate to you that anyone that accuses us of not consulting that particular person is not honest. And there was a, something that we established at the department that there was no need because it was a, our decision to. We then extended uh, to, to SGBs and established an admission task team where all SGBs were represented. And that task team is working for the last, I'm not mistaken, um, a year or so, isn't it? Uh, 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 two, years. two years. Two years. So that task team has been, has been working for two years. To say we agree with this, we don't agree with this, we agree with this, we don't agree, and we pay. So when we then finally released the admission regulations, everyone agreed with us. So therefore, it pains us that on, on the eve of opening the online registration, some organization therefore wanted superior consultation, that they must be consulted or else this thing must stop. Uh, there was a lady that was told to interdict us, and he gave us a court interdict. Uh, we received that con court interdict. Uh, I'll give you the date. But what was strange is that the court interdict relied on FETSA's objection to us. This simply means FETSA's object to us, and someone get FETSA's objection and takes us to court as a parent alone. So it was quite clear that those that don't agree with this feeder zone and they need to non racialize our education system were ganging against the department. It was a clear gang. Uh, you had a parent that we don't know, that came from nowhere, that had more information about consultation that we had with the SGB, and that parent was not there, but was raising objection on those issues. And we have those that speak a certain language, uh, that felt that they must gang together, that is SOS, uh, AfriForum, uh, and SAOU, that they felt also they must gang outside the formal consultation processes. And what were the issues? There were four main issues that they raised. One, in all the legal documents, they complain about the home address having a superior hand to determine where the parent can locate their children. Remember, the home address argument or debate, it's not innocent. Majority of our people use work address to get access to these schools. And the work address turned out to be the home address of this grouping. So if you elevate the home address, whoever that is going to use a work address coming from disadvantaged communities will be disadvantaged. That's the core of this debate. Strengthen our hand. In strengthening our hand, let's get preferential treatment. And when we get that treatment, we are the only one that can place our children uh, in those particular schools. So that was the first one. We said to resolve it, okay, uh, it's fine. But we are increasing it from giving you one option. We'll give you three options. Five. five. We'll give you five options. So that there's no concentration 
of one grouping to a one school. So if it's five, at least there's a broader representation. Uh, so that's how we resolved that legal uh, aspect and FETSAS agreed to it. The second one, they say, <coughs> tell us which language should my learner be taught? Which simply means the system must not bring all languages. If I say I'm an Afrikaner speaking person, the system must list all schools that teaches in Africans. You know what? It means certain portion of our schools, which is a public institution, will be privatized by a certain grouping and convert a public institution into a private institution. So in resolving it, say, no, 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 all languages are important. Anyone who wants, he says, my home language is Zulu, will also give schools that are teaching in Zulu. Anyone who said, I prefer to be taught in English, will also give all. So it must not only be this language, it must be all languages. Uh, and that aspect uh, was then finalized in that fashion. So we have amended that. Uh, which is a battle that I'm not happy, uh, but there are some battles that you win, there are some battles that you note. This battle is beyond the department. It's political parties that have mobilized South Africans to say, vote for us to go to parliament. They must not run away from this responsibility of having a truly non racial education system in this country. Uh, and that's one area that we've accepted with a heavy heart, uh, but accepted that uh, people should be given the choice of using the language. Here you can see the arrogance. They say, if I enter my language, don't say it's for statistical purpose. <laughs> uh, because that's how we use race for. We don't use race to place people. We use race just to know how many people have applied that are black, African, and other things. So they say remove that part. Uh, it must be information that must be used. We've accepted that as well, reluctantly so. The other part was that the parents' work address was ranked lower than the residential address. That's the part that I've just explained to you. And the very, very last one, which we rejected outrightly. Uh, we didn't even enter in a single negotiation. Uh, we rejected it from the word go. They say, if my child is in a grade R in this school, my child must not apply for the online he or she must automatically go to grade one. And our argument is simple. That's because, because grade R, it's not a legislated schooling grade. It's not part of the South African uh, Schools Act. And that some of, the, some of the grade R are privately owned, which simply means parents can't go to that school because they can't afford the fees. And if they can't afford the fees to say everyone must be automatically taken to grade one, it means those that have money to pay for grade R will be the only one that will be taken to grade one. Uh, so we rejected that aspect. Um, and we are happy that uh, FETSAS also withdrew uh, their argument on this one, is that grade R learners come from all areas. They don't come from a certain feeder zone. So therefore, you can't treat them as a different group and then allow them to move outside our online registration process. So that particular aspect has been withdrawn by FETSAS. Uh, I saw their statement. They say it's a battle for another day. Uh, and I can assure you uh, that another day I'll be ready. Whether I'm here or not, I'll be part of that particular battle. So, what were the processes that were followed? The HOD then called all these parties, had a meeting, we put our team, we put our plans, we put our legal team, and after intensive uh, uh, discussion and negotiations on all the issues that I've raised with you, all parties withdrew. Uh, the, 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 there's no letter or legal letter that it's standing on our way to open the online registration. So 
I want to take this opportunity to thank all parents for their understanding, for their cooperation, for bearing with us when we're going through this difficult process. We have the choice as a country to disrupt the future of our children or to put our differences aside and negotiate a deal that will be in the interest of our learners. So I'm proud to announce come 8 a.m. on the 20th of May, our system will go live and that all parents will be given equal opportunity to apply for their children. And I'll take you through the ranking of the applications is from which area, which area, so that you understand that even if you have applied on time, there will be a screening process uh, that needs to be followed so that we know who uh, 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 applied first and who had what and all those things. So, you know, the first aspect is the one that I said uh, we, 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 we are great, uh, is the home address. Is the home address followed by yeah before I come to the faces okay. home address followed by a sibling if I'm not uh, wrong mm -hmm. and for the first time we've removed a sibling that is in grade seven because <laughs> that sibling in grade seven won't be there next year so you can't say I'm going to that school because my other child is there. Remember, the sibling component is to assist parents not to drop one child there and go and drop another child there. So we've removed that aspect. Uh, 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 and that aspect is very, very important. So the second part, the third part is, the first part, as I said, is home address. The second criteria that we'll use is sibling. The third is the work address. So we'll check which work address uh, is closer to the school. Uh, that you need. The fourth will be the 30 kilometer radius. And this is very revolutionary, good people. So there's no child that is in Soweto that is going to be told you can't apply in four ways. We're born in a wrong area. Uh, because previously, children in Soweto were confined to Soweto. Uh, children in Tembisa were confined to Tembisa. Or a five kilometer radius. So the 30 kilometer radius. It's a very important system. But the irony is, our enemies are now using this 30 kilometer radius to defend their story. Because they know they are passing children from the farming areas outside Houdin. Uh, now the 30 kilometer radius give them an opportunity to freely pass them, nice and happy. Uh, Lisufi won't stop us. There is a 30 kilometer. But when we're introducing the 30 kilometer area, they were narrow, they were fighting us. Now they want it. Uh, I mean, take the case of Ofarfal, the case that took us to court and we lost in the constitutional court. Majority of those learners are not staying around that area, they're outside. So they will be covered now by this 30 kilometer radius. Uh, but as I said, there are other criteria before we arrive at the 30 kilometer radius. So they don't know that uh, we'll catch them. Uh, and we'll catch them badly. So that's, that's how, and the last part is that is outside the 30 kilometer radius. This simply means anyone can apply to any school. But if you check the criteria that we've put, anyone who applies for a school that is not within 30 kilometers, it's not a sibling, it's not a home language, it's not a work address, they will find it very difficult uh, to get into the education system. But that's the battle that we'll fight uh, on another day and hopefully. Uh, will be in a position to to win that battle at that time. For now, as I said, for the sake of our children, we've agreed to this thing so that our children can go to class and learn. But besides, now the Shalism is a process. It's not an event. It's a process. But some of us who believe in it will defend it. We'll defend it whatever it takes. Uh, there's no racist that can stand on our way, try to stop non-racialism. They can delay it, but they can't postpone it. Uh, and this is the gist of our education system in South Africa, good people, where a certain race is skilled and a certain race is not skilled. 
a certain race is in universities, a certain race is smoking yaope, is at the corners in the township. We must break that thing. It's not normal. We must break it. Whatever it takes. If people think that our schooling environment must be about their own children, their own children only, not any other child, they are wrong. Anyway, apartheid was man-made, and apartheid will be destroyed by men, taken into gender-sensitive uh, language. So apartheid was created by people. People forget, they think it's permanent that people will move from the township to go to urban areas. One day, people will move from the urban areas and go to the town. So we must put a legislation that accommodates that. We must put that legislation. Even if people want to stop us, they must not think permanently their children do not want to get quality education in the township. Actually, there are more township schools now that are performing better than more uh, uh, former Model C schools. So, their children will want to go to Tembisa High School in Tembisa. It can, it might sound like a far-fetched dream now, but it's a reality that will happen in our lifetime. So, when we change these regulations, we are not changing them because people are accusing me. MEC, why are you not improving township schools? As if you can't do it both. You can't improve township schools and also open for access. And that's what we are doing. We are doing both. We are building beautiful schools in the township. We are recruiting uh, excellent educators in the township. Out of the top ten districts in the country, eight come from uh, Houteng. And of the eight, they come from the township. Some of them, they come. So we are changing the entire education landscape. And that's where the threat is. People who thought our children must be garden boys and tea girls. They are scared now that our children will be actual scientists. Our children will be scientists with their own children. And it also puzzles me, because the people that are fighting us on the language issue, there is no longer a single African university in this country. So if you insist on that language, actually, you are destroying these children. And that is why I will defend it. Where will they go? Take is no longer have Africans. University of Free State no longer have Africans. Even Stellenbosch. So don't destroy the future of these children. So we will defend it uh, and defend it in a manner that will allow us to build a truly non-racial education system where children are free to choose where they want to go. So I want to conclude with the registration phases. As I said, we are opening tomorrow at 8 until the 22nd of July at midnight, not at 8, at midnight. That's why we're not closing. And immediately after that, on the 31st of August 2019, every parent that applied on time will have a happy SMS coming to their phones to say your child is placed in this school. We'll do that from the 31st of August until the 30th of September. And then the last phase then, that's when the schools will then place your child after we've accepted. Because when you send that happy SMS, you must accept within seven working days and give us all the documents that you need to give us to deal with this issue. So we've, in, we've increased the capacity of the system as well. Last year we had 30,000 per minute. We are now at 66,000. 65,000. 65,000 per minute. So we can take 65,000 uh, people at the same time. So anyone that is crossing their finger that this thing will crash and I'll apply it on my own time, you're wrong. I <laughs> don't. So last year we were on 30, it didn't crash, but we are increasing it to 65 at the same time. Uh, we will be at Deep Sloot tomorrow uh, to assist those parents that don't have access to data, uh, don't have access to computers and devices, but we are sending all our officials to all our schools <coughs> province-wide to assist those parents that don't know how to utilize this. And we are saying to parents, this is the last time uh, that people will use an excuse at the beginning of the year next year to say, uh, I didn't have data. No, we say, if you, you don't have data, come, we'll assist you. Uh, so, so don't say, I didn't know how to punch a computer when you're bringing your child uh, at the beginning of the year. Come, we'll, we'll show you. But what we've done as well, and we're aging parents 
from now on there is a video to tutorial that is available on our website that video takes parents step by step because this is a three-step process it takes parents step by step and it's very important that people familiarize themselves with it because when you open there's no room for mistake remember this process now uh, in practical terms is first come first serve whoever applies will be the one that is taken so if you are still learning uh, uh, you are going to be in trouble so those that wants to learn do it now we've put it on our website learn now tomorrow you must just press uh, 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 and do it uh, and I will test the system as well uh, personally tomorrow uh, there is a child that I'm taking care of her education she's going to grade 8 tomorrow so I will register uh, <laughs> uh, Elise I'm going to register that child tomorrow uh, so that I can go through the pain that parents are going through uh, as well and test whether this thing is working or not you will see we've launched a massive advocacy uh, campaign uh, to people not to leave this to the last minute we have circulated uh, this uh, uh, pamphlets and brochures if you can get them as well so that you know uh, where we are and you know also uh, the, the things that you can do and the things that you can't do but in conclusion the department is happy the negotiations went well all parties are happy i'm not happy with certain component but for the sake of our children We've accepted that. Our children now can apply at any school, and I'm emphasizing that point, at any school. If you wanted that school for your child, this government is making it possible for your child to apply for that school. Don't say that school, they speak Africans only, or they speak Kosa. Even if you speak Chivenda, apply. Uh, apply it will be on the basis of the numbers that will determine whether we can introduce Chivenda or not but if those that wants to speak Africans they are in majority and they can utilize all the classroom will allow them to do that but if they can't utilize all the classrooms we will be in a position to introduce another language obviously providing the resources like uh, teachers uh, textbooks and uh, and all those things the last part which excites me i must be honest it excites me there is no single school now as i'm speaking to you that has an admissions police all those admissions police we have declared them null and void so all the schools must now apply to the hod uh, for the admissions policy so there is no one that can say that mission policy of this school says you must speak Africans before you are admitted. There is no such. All those policies are null and void. There is no one that says you must speak Zulu to be. And also you will see, language is not a precursor to be admitted in these regulations. So, so we really believe that the new all the schools have a deadline of when I, I, Albert to return their admissions policies. You'll get the date from Steve. So they must return the new admissions policies. And it's the HOD that will say yes or no. And some of the admissions policies will tell them, no, 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 no. This policy came in 1920 during Trometaris. There are new people that are staying in our area, incorporate them, uh, so that it becomes a non-racial tool. So that is the battle that uh, I'm looking forward to. It excites me. Uh, that for the first time in the history of this country, all the laws that were established before 1994 we've declared them null and void, and that there is a new policy that accommodates all our children. That excites me. Actually, it's like the pie pie. It really makes me. Uh, I can leave this department uh, uh, happy. Uh, that all that mission policy that said. This school is for us only. It's gone. It's no longer there. It's dead. They tried to challenge it. If you can see even the challenges, they're not even challenging it because they know we're watertight there. Uh, so non-racialism is the future. Our children will dance, sing, and learn together. 
They can't dance and sing at the birthday party. When they go to the classroom, say, no, 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 you can't come here. You're speaking a wrong language. No, 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 no. As much as they have, what do you call this thing, Talena? Stay over, overnight. This thing of Lena sleeping over. Sleepover. Sleepover. Uh, as long as they have sleepover, they can have a study over together. Uh, they can't be discriminated because, uh, uh, I mean, it doesn't make sense to sleep over. These kids sleep over and play. I mean, I forced that some in my house. But when it comes to education, something that is very important, then you put barriers. You go to some of these popular restaurants now, go to four ways. All these children are playing king. Uh, maybe some zwing. Maybe some zwing. Uh, jumping castle, they're jumping together. But when it has to come to the classroom, then we create barriers. These children don't know color, they know human beings. Let's allow them. And if we can't build it within the classroom first, we'll never build it in South Africa. So it starts here. And we are proud as a department that we are laying that foundation of a strong non racial education system in Gaudi. And I hope other, can, uh, other provinces will open up as well so that uh, 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 we have uh, this kind of an education system for all. Steve, let me leave it here. Uh, beyond here, get in Samad. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Um, ladies and gentlemen, you know the trail. Identify yourself and the media house that you represent <coughs> in that order. Uh, one, two, three. First round, okay. First round, and okay. second round, we kill it. It's time to hear from eyewitness news. So, <laughs> about yeah. there's going to be problems um, that you cannot avoid, obviously tomorrow when it goes live. Um, what are some of the contingency plans that you guys have put together? Maybe parents can immediately call the hotline, yeah. immediately get help if they are on the system, and it yeah. happens to kick them out. You know those types of problems. <laughs> Because some of them will end up calling and complaining mm -hmm. that it doesn't true. work. But uh, what can then parents do immediately when they um, yeah. need problems tomorrow? Okay, Linda. Linda MDC from News from Africa. Uh, mine is a clarity seeking question. It's about, let me see, you mentioned that um, parents should familiarize themselves with the application yeah. process and that there will be no room for error. So the parents who don't have access to, to internet, um, are you going to be providing this, this video to them tomorrow or, or whenever they decide to go and apply? Okay. I am Dr. Tessa from the Daily Maverick. Um, it's also a clarity question. When you mentioned that language was an issue and now that it has been fixed, are you saying that parents can now use language as an option to choose a school or, yeah, I just need to on that. Okay, let me see. Let me start with the language. Remember, the argument was that a certain language needs to be prioritized. We said all languages should be prioritized, which simply means that if I'm saying I'm an African speaking parent, when I write Africans, all schools that are teaching in Africans, you will have their list. Uh, as much as you say, I prefer English, my children to be taught English. All those English-speaking schools will come out. And it goes beyond that. And that's the part that we have amended that we're excited. So if you are a boy, it will also give you boys' schools. If you want to take your child to a boys' schools, vice versa, uh, girls. But you also have religious schools. Uh, and you also have sporting schools. So, so that information will be available. Uh, 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 to all parents. In the time, we, we have contingency plans, and uh, maybe I missed that point. It's a very important point. You know, we are assisted by the Department of ECAF, uh, and I think we need to thank them for, for, for really uh, assisting us uh, on this aspect. So, we've got backups, technicians all over. And what we've done so that we don't make the same mistakes we made last time, we gave interested parties to say, test it. So every, the SGBs, they had a limited period where they needed to test it. Test it whether it won't take you out, uh, it won't log you out, if you forget your password, all those things. So they've tested it. And all of them came back happy. Uh, so, so 
we remain hopeful. But I don't want to to say there might not be any problem. Uh, you know, this is a huge operation. <laughs> it's a massive operation. I mean, we are speaking about almost uh, 2.5 million learners. Eh? Yeah. Uh, so it's a huge operation. So we have introduced the email. Uh, there's an email address I'll ask Steve to give you. If people can go through the call center, there is a call center as well. It's going live, that call center tomorrow. With email, we prefer email because it's simple. We can pick it up and other things. Uh, but let me tell you what's the delay. And I'm really aging parents. The delay is somebody who has forgotten their password. And I can't help you. And I always say, people, develop a password about something you don't like. Because don't forget something that you don't like. Uh, uh, uh. So if his case achieves, it's going to be easy. Uh, no, I'm just giving you an example. I'll dive this that, yeah. Uh, if you say case achieves 1-0, you know what happened yesterday and you won't forget it. And you'll have that uh, password. Uh, uh, maybe to apologize to Amakosi. Uh, uh, yeah, it's painful. But I was just making it an example. Because people clock, clock the call center to ask us to remind them about their password. Uh, and they clock the, 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 the call center. And also, we're requesting people, this process is device-linked, which simply means either you're using a computer, a tablet, or a cell phone. So when we communicate with you, we'll communicate with you with a choice of the device that you've given us. So if you're using a phone number, we'll, give, we'll send you the details to the phone number that have been accepted. So, don't give us a phone number that you know. You don't want a Mashonisa or somebody that you owe to track you there. Because you change the SIM card and put a new SIM card. And we still have the old one that we are sending it to you. And you say, we have not responded. But you've changed the SIM card. And that clocks the system as well. Uh, uh, because people say, I've applied, I've not been placed. No, we've placed you at the number that you gave us. Not the number that we gave you the number that you gave us and now because there is a squabble between you and that boyfriend and girlfriend you, Adam, you, you, you then abandon that number have a new number we won't know that uh, 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 there were problems at the, at the, with, with your relationship we will send you the number that you gave us so we are pleading with parents those are the things that clock the system uh, I would advise that after you have applied, it sends you a reference number. Send it to three other people that you trust. Send it to your child, send it to your husband or wife, and send it to somebody that is outside your province. So that when you forget, you can say, that email that I send you, can you forward it back to me? You've got all reference details, rather than rely on one device. Other people have genuine problems, to be quite frank. Devices are stolen. It's genuine. Uh, so you can't say this parent is, is reckless. So so we are requesting people to be creative and, and, and to, to, to attend to those things. Linda, indeed, uh, we provide access tomorrow. That is why we are sending all our officials to all our schools, all our community libraries. You'll see community libraries. And the, what do you call this place? It's internet cafes. You must just go and see what is happening. At least we have introduced an economy there. Uh, those internet cafes are flooded. Uh, actually, when we postpone, uh, there's an association of internet cafes. They were fighting me. Ah, MEC. <laughs> we bought this data for waiting for this now, you know. So it excites me that uh, people are creative economically as well. So you go to internet cafe, you can do the uh, uh, tutorials, but you go to community libraries. All our community libraries uh, we have an agreement with the Department of Arts and Culture. All community libraries are providing this service free of charge. So where people can access is go to a community library or community centers. People will assist you uh, to get uh, that particular information. Can I leave it here? If I miss uh, something, am I like, man, I'll let me examine what I'm doing. Uh, okay. this, this will be the last round, then, in that order. One, two, three, four, three. Okay. So, uh, I have a from the staff. I just want to say that I 
so challenging 2.5 million students learn as well. Is it the total health in education? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, no, it's our total number. I think great. I think all these parents are fighting for almost 100,000. Say about 200,000 yeah. spaces. They are fighting for almost 200 and say 250,000 spaces. Uh, so grade one is almost 150,000, and then grade eight is almost 100,000. So I'm speaking about 250,000. Yeah, so just, just reduce yeah? the zeros. 320, they say 320,000. 320,000. That, that's the spaces that are opening tomorrow. Everyone will demand that space. So just a uh, yes. What's the grade down of the 320? The team can give you. They can give you what is grade R, or what is grade 1. They uh, will provide you that information. Yeah. Grade 1 is about 180,000. 180,000. Okay. Grade 1 is 180,000, and then you'll minus 320. Uh, you'll get the figure. Are we done? Are good fine? people? No, no, that's good. Another hand. Just with the address, the work address, can you clarify the so if I'm staying in Soweto and working in Soweto, I'm still within that thirty kilometer yeah. radius. So I can still apply the four uh, four ways four or sent in. Oh. Yeah. Okay. But as I said, remember when then we select learners, there is a certain criteria that you might qualify, but might find that by the time we come to you the school is already full. That is why we need five options, so that we can then take you to another option. But anyone who applied on time, that is, anyone who will apply from tomorrow, there is no one that will say, I've applied and the department has not placed me. Uh, we might have placed option one, or we are option two, or three, or four, or five, but we will place uh, 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 that particular child. Last one. Uh, Well, we have given people a grace period. <coughs> uh, I think it's a three months grace period, if I'm not mistaken. Is it 90 days? Yeah, no? 90 days. 90 days is uh, three months. Grace period, uh, so that there's no vacuum. Uh, there, there's a transitional arrangement. So what we've done, each and every school now they've been given the guidelines. What the admissions policy can include and what the admissions policy can include. And then after that 90, uh, 90 days, they must then uh, give us the, 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 the relevant uh, they must give us the relevant admissions policy of the school and the HOD must certify that admissions policy. Uh, Yes, to confirm, we are starting tomorrow, 8 o'clock, 20th May, 2019, and uh, we, are ending, uh, yeah, we are ending the registration on the 22nd of July, 2019, at midnight. Uh, so, so, but I can tell you, <laughs> if you have not applied between the 20th and the 22nd, uh, reality is that the best school that you need, don't find it. There are some schools, they, I will show you, uh, Steve, I think let's do just a, a, a release of the statement. There are some schools, they get full within the first 30 minutes. The first 30 minutes, the school is already full. You have Park Town Boys, GP Girls, uh, King Edward, uh, so those ones, the first 15 minutes, the traffic is heavy. Uh, so, so, we will give you tomorrow just those statistics of the first hour so that we can show you the schools that are already full. So any parent that says, they say they start on the 20th, they close on the 22nd, I'm going to apply on the 22nd of July. Reality that by that time, uh, those schools should be full. But the online registration also assists us to know parents love this school. So can do we add extra classes and expand it? or build a new school in that area. Parents don't like this. I mean, there are some schools last year, only one parent applied. Mm. One. Uh, so, so, those kind of schools, we know now that there's no education here. Uh, so, so, we must then find a way of sorting out that problem. So, the online registration is a nice desktop that tells us where the pressures are, the areas where we must build new schools, the areas where there are new developments. So it's a very important tool. That is why parents that say 
this online registration, you don't want it. They don't know uh, that it makes things easier. We know now from the HOD, we can go to Treasury. Uh, say, Treasury, we need X amount of textbook for this grade and this grade. Because we have now. You are not thumb psyching. You are not just speculating. Uh, and we also give uh, a percentage adjustment to say, yes, we have, they have applied now. We know this number will come during January. Because now we can work on the on the statistics and the number. So, and it also tells us how many new teachers we want and where and for which subject. So, so it's a very important system, and one is happy that uh, we've introduced this system within the schooling environment. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that was it. This uh, Thank you so much. Thank you, sent us uh -huh. that MEC, MEC men mentioned, but we will also uh, send it to you electronically so that we can share. On that score, thanks very much. Thank thanks, very much. thanks, 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 good people. Yeah. There's some water outside. That's the water. Let's have a mat outside. Just water. 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 Just it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be. It's